Hey guys, I'm Nathan Masters from Brick System Brothers, and I have a wide selection of LEGO bows to look at today. Um, really, the point of this video is to just kind of take a quick look at some of the different sizes that LEGO has offered over the years, and maybe not go so in-depth with all of these, but there's definitely a lot to explore here. Um, so I think a good way to do this is kind of work away from the smallest up to the biggest one that we have, and there's definitely bigger uh, LEGO sets and LEGO boats out there, but... Again, just kind of wanted to give a general overview. So, if you look all the way down at minifigure scale, um, there's kind of this little parasailing board, uh, surfboard style of a boat. You know, hardly classifies as a, as a vessel, but I figured I'd throw it on the list since I had it on hand. And uh, these these sails are actually kind of cool. Um, it's a vinyl piece on here, and just a couple different bars are holding all of this together. So, a ball and socket joint. And this design actually goes back a little ways to the 90s at least, possibly earlier, for the little sail, parasail boat. Um, in recent LEGO sets, we have a new kayak piece, which is really sleek. Um, Josh and I actually did a little video on this. We weren't able to get a single kayak to float, but by building two of them together, we made a, a kayak catamaran, and that actually floats. Um, this comes so far in a small $10 set, which is a good way to get the kayak. Uh, even though on the set it says the kayak does not float, um, we were able to kind of rig something together. So that was a fun that was a fun video. Um, I'll throw that one up there in the card if you want to check it out. Uh, but we had fun doing that one. So the kayak has room for one person, two if they're standing, but you don't really want to stand in a kayak. And it's kind of designed to look like a rubber dinghy. Or maybe maybe uh, like a, that plastic shell casing that they have now. Um, if you want to go for more of the inflatable look, there are a couple options for that that are small. So these have been around for a little while. A couple different colors as well. Um, I do believe there is a black version of this inflatable raft as well. The Coast Guard one is really cool. It's actually really realistic with these stickers on here. Uh, and this orange color is similar to what you'd actually see in a real life scenario. Uh, so that's cool to get as well. Our inside surface area here is 2x6 studs. Uh, the overall size looks like about 6 wide and 10 long. So 6x10 roughly. Again, here's a, an older yellow one from the 90s, so those go way back. Here's a very nice canoe that we have. The inside studs available are 2x8. Outside studs probably about 14 long and 3 or 4 wide. So again, kind of in a regular shape. It's not going to stick all the way down if you have it on a base plate, but it's kind of meant to be in like a water display. Um, this comes in a camper set for sure, and possibly a few other ones. So that is, again, kind of small, but getting bigger. Uh, similar to the rubber dinghy, but kind of the precursor to that would be the wooden rowboat, which, uh, you know, could feature in a more historical set. So if you want to look at the Pirates of the Caribbean line, where it's set back in the 16, 1700s, um, the old Soldier Fort line had these. Um, and these are really nice to have in brown because it's, then it's that neutral wood color. But this dark blue one is nice as well. Uh, I believe this was from Pirates of the Caribbean, uh, the Isle, Isle de Muerta from, uh, oh, probably from the first movie. So it's been around for a little while. Um, several color options as well here. There is another intermediate rowboat size that I don't have that's a little longer and a little taller. Um, but the sizing on this one is four studs wide on the inside. And then we've got ten all the way out in the in the bow here. Our outer diameter is going to be about five by twelve. So similar to some of these other ones. Um, if we want to look at the next size up in width, where you can look at preformed boats from the old days, from the 80s actually. They kind of come in these sections that will all snap together. Uh, I'm not aware if these were made to float or not, but they're definitely kind of a sealed compartment. I believe it would definitely be capable of floating if you wanted to do that. Unfortunately, I only have the rear section from one of these boats, so a cool piece nonetheless. In more recent times, um, specifically the hidden sideline, we're actually looking at more of a brick-built approach from LEGO. So the shrimp captain boat from the hidden side set um, that was, you know, just last year released, is definitely uh, much more of a, a brick build approach with this, uh, these whole plates here, and still a pretty large size of pieces used to build the hole, but it's definitely uh, more work than just slapping the top of the boat on a preformed hole case. 
So when you get these kind of brick built ones, these are definitely not going to be capable of floating, um, just too much packed into the same area. With these we're able to get a little more detail though, so I am I do appreciate our brick built boats as well. And you know you can get some really interesting sizes with this small shrimp trawler. So that's a good I think a good case to make for a brick built boat is really control over the sizing. If you want to look at a similar size but something that's a little faster in prefab, uh, these have been around for a while. And these sizes are easy to determine. We've got the 6 by probably 14 or 16 down in the lower portion. Then there's a prow portion as well that kind of goes up out to a point. So a little bit of an irregular angle up at the top here. The other thing with these is they do separate. So if you need to get in there for some reason or if you want to swap colors, um, top and bottom colors out, that is a good way to do that. The reason for this is... Uh, there is now an air cavity in here, and this boat will float in the tub or the sink or the lake or wherever you want to take it. As long as you don't fill this up with like gold or rocks or something, uh, and you just have a couple of Lego pieces building on a cabin or uh, some benches or something, you know, put some motors on the back, this will have no problem floating in a sink. So nice for uh, the actual test runs in the water. A very similar piece, this is going to be a more modern counterpart. This one, probably from the 80s and 90s, is another preformed hole. A little more of an angular prow here. I think this is actually a nicer looking boat. Um, a really similar inside depth and sizing, and then again with that angled prow. But as you can see, this actually has more curvature to it, whereas this one has kind of a compound angle approach. So I actually like this boat better, but it is not in production anymore. It hasn't been for a while. One thing with these older LEGO boats, and I'm not seeing it on the new ones, is there is a location to attach uh, a separately sold motor that you could actually power these boats and get them going around. Probably not very fast, but still a really cool idea. And I think this one is Josh's, and he was telling me there might also be some styrofoam in here for extra buoyancy. So I'm not sure if this uh, is designed to separate out. It definitely doesn't want to pop out just on its own. I'm not going to force it. Probably is assembled and has some clicks and clamps in there that will hold that together. Okay, so back to our rubber dinghy idea is kind of the next step up with that. A little bit larger and this is where you're going to be able to kind of build more of a structure onto the rubber dinghy where it still still has that appearance of an inflatable raft but is going to be a little more substantial uh, and it could carry some more personnel as well. So. Our inside dimensions here are 6 by 12 on the inside, and the whole thing is 10 by probably about 16. So definitely getting a little bigger with this one. Uh, on the bottom side, these are just hollow. Um, this is all sealed up on the bottom. I bet this thing would float. I haven't actually tried it, though. One thing with these is you'll actually see a lot of stickers if these are in sets, and water and stickers don't always mix. I've actually... I uh, haven't had a terrible time with stickers getting wet and coming off uh, of Lego pieces for me, but I don't really like to so leave them in the water for very long, just in case. So keep that in mind if you're going to float these. So uh, that's kind of a good stopping point for the smaller boats um, and the smaller fleet over here. And there's just a range of years here. If you look way back into the 60s and 70s for Lego, they were doing exclusively brick-built, and I mean, it was everything at that point. Uh, it was all based on the system, 2x4s and 2x2s, and a few windows and doors and, and roof slopes. So uh, anything you're going to see from that era is all brick built. And you know you can get good defining shapes, but when they start to get into the prefab holes and the, the specialty pieces you know, that are specifically designed for boats is when you can really get the realism. And so you look at the range. Uh, of years in Lego boat designs and really it's the past 20-30 years that you start to get more realistic so everything before that is really blocky and and in general that's just Lego like not just boats like everything was like that automobiles um, even Lego horses so I have another video on those too but yeah that's about it for the smaller boats and there's not really a, a, a hard line where those stop and, and the taller ones begin but that kind of splits the table in half, so I guess I'll go with that. I've got these two on loan from Josh. Um, I'm pretty sure these are almost 100% complete sets. 
He's been working on getting these back up to 100% completion for a while. I don't know if he's going to try to hang on to them for his collection or maybe sell them off, but they are really nice looking boats and a couple different designs going on here. So what we start to see with the larger boats is kind of two different ways that they can go where we either have the outside shell goes all the way up past the deck or you have an outside shell that comes up and meets a deck plate that kind of hangs over the side. And I don't know if it makes a difference in the floating capabilities of these or whether they are able to disassemble, um, but just kind of two different designs I've noticed. Um, an interesting choice here to put the stickers on as this would probably be water capable in the water. Um, you might get a little residue on there, but probably wouldn't hurt it too bad. And again, with the structure, you know, just looking at this, it does look kind of uh, substantial, but it's pretty lightweight. You know, there's not a lot of bricks in here, and I believe there's a styrofoam core in this one as well. So just trying to keep the weight down so that this can be as buoyant as possible. And uh, I think it'd look pretty cool to have these, you know, coasting down along the little puddles outside the front door. Interesting thing with this one is there is no uh, motor attachment point. So this was probably made in the transition period where they were going from the older designs where you had those slots on the bottom to the newer designs where there's really just some grooves and, um, you know, flow lines and that kind of thing. So completely smooth on the bottom of this one. This one, however, does have that attachment point. It's just something where you could slide a motor on, um, and I'm not sure how those motors were, you know, able to function in the water. They're probably all sealed off really good, but... This one is substantially heavier. Um, I don't know if I'd put money on this one floating. Uh, it's definitely uh, more dense in terms of the bricks that are built into the structure here in the actual hull itself. It definitely got more weight to it. So this might be more of a boat for looks. And just looking at the color of the gray here and the sides, it, I think it is a couple years, five to 10 years older than the police boat, which is definitely designed to be floated. So yeah, kind of a comparison here. I do really like that we have these uh, the slots up on the front on, in the prow where um, you could maybe put a string anchor down through there. Not going to fit a Lego chain through those, but um, this boat does have a string tow line in the back, so maybe something similar to that up front could have been for an anchor. Oh, okay, and then it kind of diverges again in terms of the structure of larger boats. So as we move on up with the sizing, uh, I guess I didn't talk about the dimensions here. These are 10 wide, and now we're up to like 24, 28, 30 studs long. So getting wider and longer. If we want to stay at the 10 to 12 range, we have this really narrow police boat. And again, this is the design that will pop apart. So we have this kind of air cavity and then the brick base to build your actual structure in. And uh, you know, this is gonna be the one where the hole comes up to meet the brick base. So that's similar in design to this one. Comparatively, we have an older model with the hole coming all the way up the side and an actual hollow structure in here as well where it's gonna be comparable to this design. The interesting thing with this boat is we do have this air cavity in here, which is going to help it float. And it's been designed to be exactly 10, no, 12 studs wide and 24 studs long here. And Josh actually has a 6x24 plate that I believe only came in this set. It's light gray, and it's designed to have two of them forming um, the floor, the, the deck, the main deck of this boat. And then you could just lift that off to access down inside, which is really nice design. So. I just have this 4x10 here to test our width, and it's got these little ridges where we can actually rest even a really narrow plank out here in the middle and, uh, and hold that up. So, you know, if you wanted to put a sliding floor on, uh, it might not be the most stable, but it is definitely capable of, of doing that if you wanted to have some cargo in here or something. So, I really like these boats because they're, they're just an open canvas in terms of what you want to build on them. Uh, whether or not it came in a set, I believe this was a fire boat. Um, you know, once you're done with that set, you just take everything off and now you have a whole new base. You can design a, a shipping vessel, um, anything, anything can go on there. So, you want to put these side by side comparison. We've got our police 
small trawler, police large trawler. This one's maybe 10 years old. And then our another Coast Guard and a fire boat comparison over here. And the last ones that I'm going to take a look at are the uh, kind of a compound color, uh, very bulky boat hole sections. So I'll start with the smaller one. This is already eight studs interior wide, but now our wall thickness is doubled up to two studs on each side. So it's, it's more of a prefab hole that you could actually make um, kind of a custom sizing, which is really, really cool with these. Uh, unfortunately, in this smaller size, I only have the rear, the, uh, the aft deck of one of these boats. But it is in this cool dark gray black color scheme. Uh, I've definitely had my eyes open for the rest of this guy. So if I can pick up the rest of the pieces for him and get this thing built to completion, that would be really cool. The way that these assemble is there are notches in the bottom where you would put the next section up to it and then put in uh, two by four bricks. And that would just hold these sections together. So nothing really stable, um, but it does the trick, especially when you're just going to be pushing these along on the floor. And there's also an attachment point for a rudder on the back. So that's the smaller one. We have a really similar design when we look at the next size up and from a similar era. And after this, we get a slightly redesigned boat hole shape. Uh, but I'll look at this one first. Again, we've got a rudder attachment point on the back here, those same notches on the bottom to kind of continue that through. Um, and in terms of actual connection pin points on the side, we don't have those on this model. But for the similar size and the later uh, iteration of design, we now have the Technic pin connection points. And some boats, including the Imperial flagship behind me up here, also have the notches. So kind of the best of both worlds in terms of attachment. Uh, Width-wise, these are compatible. And actually, streamline-wise, it looks like they are as well. So to actually get these uh, assembled together, uh, I can't think of one piece off the bat that would do the trick. It'd be the 2x2 two two with a Technic pin. You know, it'd just go one on each side here, and that would just snap right into place. So really great job on LEGO for continuing that, um, that profile all the way through the old and the new design. So let's take a look at this new design real quick. Uh, like I said, it has these Technic attachment points now, which allows for a little more stability. But we also have the ability to customize our deck height with this uh, extension. So, you know, depending on how many of these you have, you could get one, two, three, and kind of stagger them back as well. Um, if you want to maybe skip a floor and have something straight up and then jump this one back, you start to get more, more details on your model. And it also has left open the, the middle two studs if you want to incorporate some fancy prow designs. And this is kind of where the Imperial flagship model disappointed me because all they did with that space on the official model was put in a bunch of inverted 2x2 two two slopes. Um, I feel like there's a potential there to do something more, but I haven't um, really had the time to do a rework of that model. I don't know if I want to either. It's kind of iconic at this point. But. Once you get up to this size, we have these mid-sections that you're able to, again, customize the, the size of your boat. So. Not really much of the prefab anymore. Now we have um, really just the sizing thing. You can build in modules of eight, which is currently all there is, I believe. So multiples of eight in terms of the length of your boat, and our width is going to be pretty fixed. So nothing really to do with that right now. Um, the other difference between this new iteration and the old iteration is this is all one mold, one color. These are actually two different components that are held in place with screws. So there's four holes here, um, two down closer to the water line, and then up here towards the top. Um, just going to be small Phillips head holding these together. Uh, definitely possible to get them apart if you want to clean it or something like that, um, but not necessary for, for building. It's already ready to go just how it is. But the nice thing about this is you can actually get the multiple colors going on here and these really smooth transitions that aren't really possible with our current slope situation. So the brown to the red is really nice. And you can imagine once you start filling in the sections in here with the appropriate brown color, you can get a really nice looking schooner or pirate ship or whatever you want to build. The beauty of Lego. So 
Yeah, just a little summary of some of the boats from LEGO over the years. A good range, uh, I'd say 20 to 30 years back, up to the last year's brick-built design from Hidden Side. And the other thing that we've noticed that's come a long way through the years is the minifigures themselves. Um, when we're looking at the flagship, we've got the Royal Guard in their red. Their red colors, relatively simple printing, nothing on the legs. Um, a really nice shoulder pad though. And now, even on our smaller hidden side sets, um, there's minimal leg printing available, really detailed um, details on the vest and the jacket. The hat is a wonderful piece, and uh, this color as well, or, or orange juice yellow, or whatever you guys call it. Um, so it's really cool to get pieces in this mold, in this color, and we're even seeing this in the smaller sets. So definitely an increase in the minifigure quality. Uh, which I would hope to see. That's kind of across the board, so uh, Hidden Side's keeping up there. And yeah, boats really pervade a lot of themes of the LEGO universe in terms of just, you know, their regular town themes, um, city. There is a, a green uh, grain boat that LEGO had, uh, like a shipping. The hole was open, and you, you know, you pull up to the, the docks, and it's just full of these one-by-one -one round pieces of grain. Uh, I kind of wanted to get that back in the day, never picked it up. Uh, it does have actually like flared sides for additional buoyancy or whatever. But And the other one that I think is worthy of mention, even though it's not out here on the table, was the research vessel where we actually saw kind of two extended sides going back with a moon pool where there was a sub and there was a crane assembly that you could winch that sub in and out of the water. So I think that's a really cool design, especially that they're able to dedicate a whole mold to that design as well, and not just build it out of bricks and call it good. So definitely quite a range of boat designs from uh, from Lego, and we're not just doing, you know, it's kind of funny. We started out with the brick built. Uh, you know, if you want to if you want to see an example, a specific example would be the Constellation, uh, which I did a Lego Digital Designer series on, and that was all bricks and plates. There's no holes, no preformed anything. There's Technic pieces holding all the mast uh, stuff all the way down in the bottom of the hole. And it's actually a really well designed, um, you know, ship, but it's all brick built and it does get kind of blocky. And so it went from that, from the 80s, and then these these really smooth, specially designed pieces with the streamlines on the bottom. Um, some of these were actually able to, you know, get a counterweight stuck up on the bottom if you wanted to and that would keep it pretty stable in the water. And then we move up from there to these really lifelike rubber versions, plastic versions of the rubber dinghy that have a great size platform for adding on to. And finally, we've actually now worked our way back to the brick-built boats, but because uh, the variety of molds has increased so much, we have all of this curvature available to really bring these brick built boats to life and add some stunning detail as well so um yeah covered a lot of ground pretty quick if you guys have a specific boat set you wanted me to look at um or maybe like looking at one of these closer i know josh at some point could do some videos on these two um when when he gets those completed but we haven't really done anything specific in terms of what's out on the table besides our kayak video so go check that out that was a lot of fun to do um, and float that in the sink. And uh, I guess until the next video, I'll see you guys. Thanks for watching.